trying to test the hypothesis that we posted last week, uh, but the problem is that there does not seem to be enough time to do the Mutashio action with the um, with the sequence that we described on Patreon. Uh, so, and also in the video. So this is we've tried to to figure out why then um, does the Mutashio separate sword and shield. And that may be because the strike from the overbind is much simpler than we assumed. It is, uh, we then now say that it is probably a Sturzhau on the right side rather than on the left side that is the main attack. And we did say that this is a strike. Um, it's just that it was not described as the main strike but the, the one provoking the shield action. So if we if we then, if we show what we think now, uh, that is, I fall into the sword and shield, and in this position now, this is where both of our uh, tempi can start. So, my tempo from here would be uh, probably a sidestep and a thrust. So, that would be one tempo. And Pierre's tempo will be the overbind from directly from here. So he does that and the strike as well. Boom. So that is really simple. So the shield strike makes sure that I cannot cover and then he just directly strikes at my head. So he needs to commit for that action because that's much faster than the other. However, if I want to counter Pierre's tempo, I need to let him initiate his first. If he's countering mine, I have a very short time to do a Mutashio and I'm probably dead before I can do it. So the, in the two situations it looks more or less like this. So I fall under and I start to thrust and then Peter does his overbite. I'm dead. Um, and the other one is I fall under the sword shield. Uh, Peer initiates his uh, overbind, but I do Natasha Gladi, and I have time to counter it because he's doing a committed action, and now I have space in between. So now, from here, I can actually strike directly uh, while I cover myself. But I need to cover pretty high to do so. He's, he's starting his tempo, which is the overbind, then I can, I can then do my Mutashio Gladi with following with the Nuken, which is the separating of sword and shield. Um, in case he's doing a panic like action of pushing me uh, to this side while I'm striking, I might simply do a uh, Dupleon. Um, but that's not uh, probably what's in the manuscript, which says uh, from here the priest something uh, strikes towards the opponent, thus separating sword and shield. And um, if, however, Peer's primary strike is the uh, Sturzau on the, his left side, my Mutasha Gladi would hit his sword as he is moving towards that position, which means that I have nearly no use for my Mutasha Gladi in that situation. So I fall under. And then, as we did, I thrust, and then he does the overbind, moves forward, and then I do the Mutash Gladi, and then I end up here, and Pierre's sword is already uh, on the other side, which means that the only way I can strike him is for some sort of champion. I can certainly not separate his sword and shield and do anything useful with it, because he is uh, simply in a in too strong a position for me to strike between the sword and shield. He said that Peer was in ha uh, half shield and then shoots an I fall under. I proceed to thrust. He starts his overbind. I then do Mutashio, and as I do Mutashio, he is already, since his tempo is much shorter, in going for the Sturzhau on the left side. And that basically means that I'm practically dead. I mean, this is the very extreme where I am 
very lately, but it's nevertheless uh, is a situation we got into in uh, trying to do this technique many times. Whereas when we simplify the strike from the overbind to be the Sturzau on the right side, uh, the Mutashudadi worked more often than it did when we had the Sturzau on the other side. So, let's do it a few times. Uh, Pip does the overbind. Okay, let's do it again. And this time I thrust, and then you react by doing the overbind, which means that Pierre is then in this, in my tempo, so he's in between my, uh, my thrusting tempo. Boom. Super fast. And I can't really raise, if I'm keeping my shield arm stretched, I can't raise my shield enough to cover me, because he's, when he's striking, he's lifting his hand. So his, his stortal is like this. So he's raising his hand to strike. The only reason why he's not doing it a lot now is because he does not want to strike me actually in the face. <laughs> so, um, and that's really fast. Okay, let's do the, let's do it a few more times. Okay, let's do it from the other side. So. Then the uh, Mutasu Gladi is, uh, happens as a reaction to him doing the overbind. And if he's very pushy, I need to, of course, adjust the distance. Uh, because otherwise I might get caught. And even though if he's pushy, he's likely also on false time. But uh, maybe it's not worth it for me to strike in his legs because I might get struck on my head. So it's too dangerous for me to, to do that. I need to adjust my distance. Yeah. It's large for him with this strike. Yeah. So he has a lot of reach with this strike because he is in a thumb grip and he is at full uh, elongation of his arm. This is a very long uh, strike. So it's easy to have long reach. So um, I fall under. And now I do not start my tempo, but Pierre starts his tempo. And then I get to this point. I'm still a bit late in this situation because I'm pretty much already dead. But anyway, I have intercepted his, his sword. So um, if I do it properly. And particularly if I retreat, not by stepping, but by sitting down in preparation to do the counter action. I might also just take a slight step back, but it's very small adjustments needed because I simply need to take myself just out of reach of his right side stutzhal for my Mutasha Gladi to work and for me to be uh, able to strike in between his own shield. So, um, the two actions are uh, quite simple, really. So the overbind, this is the, uh, the half shield, and then the, um, the schützen is the same as we demonstrated last time, which is the uh, open side grip uh, leaning against the shield, and then when I overbind, I simply lift this hand over the other. It's sort of the um, it's sort of the beginning of a snake movement with this hand. So I go here and then I this is the overbind. And then from here I 
I move forward with the shield and then I change position of the sword and this is the thumb grip and now the sword is covering me basically from the point of the opponent's sword which is down here somewhere but the, the shield strike is really the main thing in this situation and from here I simply strike the Sturzau on this side because now I'm connected to the other shield which means that the sword that's here cannot do anything on this side and then I'm free to strike here Okay, here in half shield and then I open my grip to this open uh, side grip and then I do the overbind and I go fo push forward with, for the shield strike, reposition the sword, go to thumb grip and then I strike the Sturzau on this side. If there is a panic block, I can strike the Sturzau on the left side instead. We fall under by placing the sword in side grip against the, the sword in the middle, the, the half shield of sword. And this is more or less just to be ready for the thrust, to be able to do the thrust next. And then as the overbind starts, I pull the sword up and out while I change my grip to thumb grip and then I move it back. And this way I, I pull the sword and it's, it's not really, it's, I'm not dropping the point. I pull the pommel up at an angle to clear the, the, the opponent's shield, which is out here. So I clear the opponent's shield and now as I uh, pivot the sword around the pivot point, and push it back in, uh, I get to this position uh, for the um, for the nukin. So looks like this. Fall under, up, and in. And as I pull the pommel, that's when I change to the thumb grip. Because if I change the thumb grip already, I could do it right uh, right away, as as he is pushing. But then I might be too late for the Mutasu Gladi. So I'd rather pull the pommel and then change position of the hand and then be ready for the thumb grip. So falling under, side grip, and then the overbind starts. I pull and now I'm in thumb grip. And now I pivot the sword to get back into the center and re-establish the bind. And now I can strike the Chinook. Tak for det. Tak for det.